consciousness exists in all, everywhere. However, the ability to connect with that consciousness varies. The ability to be conscious of consciousness varies. An amoeba, an apple, an earthworm do not have the ability to be conscious the way that we do. Now, what we know is that our brain, our central nervous system, is the way that we experience and understand consciousness. It isn't consciousness. Consciousness is not the gray and white matter of my brain. It's not living in the cells of my brain. It's not living in the chemicals in the vesicles at the end of the cell. It's not living in the myelin sheaths that cover the axon through which the electricity goes. But all of that combined is what enables me to be conscious that I am conscious. And we know that because when people are brain dead or have brain damage, consciousness still exists, but they're no longer able to access it. So going back for a moment to the different forms of life, consciousness exists. But without the very, very advanced brain and central nervous system, they don't have the ability to be aware of that consciousness. This is why we were talking about veganism and vegetarianism. And one of the questions that always arises is, Don't plants feel? Don't fruits feel? Isn't that also violent? Now, in an ideal world, we would all be breatharians. But we can't. And so what we do is we eat as low on the consciousness level as possible so that we are causing the least amount of harm as possible. And so we know that an apple is less conscious than a cow. We know that a cucumber is less conscious than a pig or a chicken. And so we eat as low as we can on the consciousness level because to allow ourselves to die is also violence. We are definitely conscious. So we have to eat something. But we do it as non-violently as possible, as aware as possible. And this is also why we pray before we eat. We pray, we understand that that same divine that lives in me lives in them. We understand that, we bow to that. And we understand kikuchto kanajaye. So there is consciousness, but it is much less. And this is why when we speak about karma and reincarnation and the idea of moksha, this is why nobody says that an apple can attain moksha or an earthworm can attain moksha. It's not ki wo pop kar rahe. It's not ki ye to bahut, you know, galat apple hai. It's that because they're not able to be conscious, they can't make those choices, have those experiences, have that awareness. Deka jaito, we are much more papi than an apple is. But we are the ones who can attain moksha because we have that consciousness. So in a very superficial nutshell, that's that part of the question. Then Einstein, Puja Swamiji, the rest of us, Consciousness is actually not even separate. It's not like Einstein's consciousness. 
or Pooja Swamiji's consciousness. There's just consciousness, like there is soul. The difference is that we each have a different ability to interact with that. So for example, there is beautiful fresh air. Somebody who is very adept in pranayam, if you put like one of those oxygen things on their fingers, in a few moments, they are going to be able to use that fresh air in a way that will oxygenate their entire body. Their oxygen level will go up to 99%, 100%. Stories of monks meditating in the snow, creating heat. Sitting naked in the snow, but staying warm. They're using the power of the breath. They're taking in oxygen, the same oxygen we all take in, but they've developed an ability to utilize that oxygen in a way that is very different from what most of us can do. In the same way, when you have a refined, and I wouldn't necessarily put Einstein there, we'll talk about him in a moment, but when you talk about Pooja Swamiji and you talk about the enlightened masters, they have refined the internal organ, you can say, in such a way that they are living full of that consciousness, like the pranayam expert is living full of oxygen, living full of prana, which most of us cannot access. It's available for us, but we can't access it. When you take someone like Einstein, he's got a very, very developed brain, a very developed intuition. I'm not necessarily sure that I would put that on par on a consciousness level, though. I haven't studied his spiritual experiences enough to be able to say that, he was a genius, no doubt. He had intuition and insight, no doubt. He was able to see in the way that our rishis and sages could close their eyes and understand. He absolutely had access to that internal way of knowing. So consciousness is there for all of us. The question is, how are we going to access?